warm welcome. This is um, episode number eight of the uh, the Noise Podcast. Carts to cars in the very plush studios of uh, Isolation Studios down here in Chandler, and it's another international flavour. I am very pleased to be able to welcome. First of all, uh, from Tasman Carts. Brendan Gridley, welcome Brendan, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, how are you? I'm good, mate, I'm good. And our superstars, these are the superstars. Uh, first of all, Matt Fletcher and the, uh, the driver, Isaac Fletcher. Isaac, welcome, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good good that you brought him, thanks for bringing him <laughs> over, <laughs> over the Dutch. Uh, can I say that? No. Of course you can. They're going to whack me if I keep putting out the New Zealand jokes. Um, <laughs> fellas, it's really good to have you brought, because I know you've come over for some really good racing, but um, we've got a great story. It is carts to cars, as is the normal rule that we have in this podcast. So um, we're going to start first of all with you, Isaac. Um, I think age seven, you started car racing, is that right? Yep, that's right. Where was your first time in a car? What was it? Where did you go? What did you do? Uh, so I was at my home track in Christchurch, and yeah, my first ever go was actually following the club prison around the track, because I think my dad was friends with them at the time. And Was that like a come and try type thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was right, a ha- yeah, like have yeah, a go, yeah, and yeah. yeah, I was just putting along around the track following him. Yeah. Yeah. Was that in a coma or was it? What kind of cart was it? Uh, I was in a a racket. I don't know if you probably haven't heard of that. No, what's it called? A, 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 a racket. A racket. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like sounds like something we would wreck over here. Yeah. Old, I like that name. An old Bring cha- them here. An old chainsaw motor. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. So like, proper vintage. So how did you feel? What was it like? Was that that, that the starting of a a real dream? That oh, I could do this. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah I loved it as soon as I got on the cart. Yeah, yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. So from there on. Um, you're now going to start your karting career. Dad's obviously going to take you around to some tracks. Um, what was your first racing situation? Where did you get into first racing? Where were you? What did you do? What championship was it? What clubs? What, how did they run racing over there in New Zealand? Oh, uh, yeah. So my first ever race was just a, a club day at Christchurch. And I think there was only six of us racing. And, yeah, I was at the back, obviously. And, yeah, I think I ended up crashing in one yeah. of the races. And I couldn't couldn't race after that. So it was a... But annoying, but how big is the cross? How big is the track there? How big is the, what kind of a circuit is it? Um, it's quite tight and technical. Um, how many meters? Do you know how long it is? Um, I think it's well, maybe, how many seconds? Probably, you probably know how many seconds yeah, it is. Well, it's about 30 seconds, so it's about 540 meters yeah. for those who because <laughs> I work this, I walk these tracks every time, so I kind of <laughs> know that, right? Okay, so it's a reasonable, like a Lismore track for those in, in Australia, Lismore kind of size track. Any elevation in it, or was it generally a flat track? It's pretty flat, yeah. All right, so as for learning, that was your first opening sort of session in carts, you felt quite comfortable and it got faster and faster as you went, yeah, yeah. When did you go to different circuits at what age and what classes were they? Uh, so I think I was about eight when I first went to the North Island. This was in uh, for the Gold Star Series, the 2017 and 2018 series. Yep. And, yep. Um, yeah, it was a very good experience. So they raced a lot harder than um, what I was used to in the South Island. And, yeah, I think in one of the races I got forced out wide and into the grass and into the fence and bent the cart up. And, yeah, that was my first real taste of Pretty good competition. That's, that's where Dad comes in. So yeah. he's on the spanners and also on the hammer. So yeah. he's straightening the thing out. But I believe first place in in this race or series is that is that your first yeah. first win? Yeah, I think it was the following year I won that in the cadet class. So, yeah, and I got a trip to Australia, which was yeah. yeah was... So you've won it. So you've won your first race over there, and that gets you a chance to come to Australia. Yeah. Now racing over there in New Zealand compared to racing in Australia. What did you find the difference was? Because I think it was, was it Melbourne, City of Sydney? Yeah, Total? City of Melbourne, yeah. That's a really big event. There's normally 200, 250 people there. So yeah. you would have had big classes. So yeah. what was the what was the feeling like when you went from what you had over there with however many were in the races to coming over to this one? What was the what was the thought process and how did it go? Um, yeah, it was very, very hard racing. Um, I, I can't remember what I qualified. Maybe I think it was about 25th or something. So yeah, it was quite far back and... Um, yeah, yeah, the, the racing in Australia was completely different to New yeah. Zealand. They race, yeah, as I said, very hard and yeah. it was very competitive and yeah. yeah, way more cars on the track as well. Yeah. Like there was about fifty people that yeah. were entered in uh, yeah. the Cadet Twelve class. Yeah. Is what I was racing. So at this point, you're obviously coaching him. You've brought him over. Yeah. Um, what was the feeling like bringing your own kid from what is basically the comfort of your own tracks to somewhere where it's a, a much like. Buster's done alien environment. A lot of you know they they are. Uh, we all want to be Formula One drivers in in Melbourne. It's a that's a big event. So how did you a keep him calm? B get him to improve. What did you do? Yeah, it was definitely a bit of an eye opener. Um, 
I guess one of Isaac's strengths is nothing much phases him, so that didn't worry me too much. But yeah, it was pretty grand. You know, we we weren't used to big trucks, um, yeah, so a bit more sort of out of the trailer at home. But um, I guess one of the other challenges was um, <clears throat> the age group's a little bit different across the ditch. Uh, so I think for memory, Isaac had to jump into a Cadet 12 because he was slightly too old from the right. equivalent in New Zealand. So yeah. that was, you know, out of our little second-hand go-kart into a brand new off-the-shop yeah, floor yeah, kind of yeah, thing. And it was yeah, like, oh, crikey, right. what's going on here? Yeah. But, oh, look, you've you, you, you got to surround yourself with the right people yeah. and, um, and 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 understand how the team works. Um, it's If you want to be serious, it's a bit more than just mum and dad and, yeah. and, and really sort of uh, working out who you need and what, what they yeah. focus on to help, yeah. you know, yeah. get you across the line. So. Were you involved at this point, Brendan? Was that were you there uh, yet or were you not on the picture yet? No. If you were, they're going to ignore you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. We were actually on the picture, but it was actually after the city of Melbourne that I came on board with Tasman. Right, so, okay, all right. And then we started a relationship there yeah. and, all right. and it's grown year by year. All right, cool. Well, so. hold that thought. Then I'm going to bring you in in a minute because I really want to hear your input into Isaac's progression because undoubtedly with with cart drives and I'm I'm hearing it in every single episode I do there's a progression there's a there's a there's a switch from lads and dads you know fun at the track club day racer to cart team data and everything else so that's that's coming and I think you're going to be both in, involved in that shortly so you've gone from Melbourne and obviously that was a great experience an international race event and you know you've gone back home now and it's 2019 2020 first and second in the south island sprint title so clearly you've taken a bit more if you like um, experience with you and you've improved tell us how that then went and how did you did you use the information you got on the experience you got from australia to improve and get those results that you got back over in, in at home in new zealand yeah yeah so i think the first time well, when i did the south island when i got first i think that was only a couple of weekends after I actually went to Melbourne. And yeah, yeah, it was a very good weekend. I had um, uh, Zach Tucker on my tail the whole race yeah. for the final and he was putting the pressure on and I just had to keep my eyes forward and I think I learnt to handle the pressure better from racing in Australia. So. Yeah, yeah. Was this still Cadet 12 or you went to juniors now? I oh, know this is, um, yeah, in Cadet 12. In yeah. Cadet 12 yeah. still, but in New Zealand. So yeah. did they run the same kind of Cadet 12 over there when you were, when you went back? Was it similar kind of format to what you have here, Cadet 12, at the age you went back at? Yeah, well, I think um, the age was a little bit different, so I think I actually did go back to Cadet at 9 yeah. in New Zealand, but I had to go to Cadet 12 in Australia because... Yeah. Because of the ages. Yeah, the ages. Yeah, yeah, so it's slightly different. At this point then, key question, were you running Darty yet? Um, I can't quite remember. I don't think so. It no. wasn't with Brendan. Yeah, but, all right. Um, yeah, no. So at that stage, it's, it's very much learning club day racing style, having even though you've gone international, and it's all about lines, breaking points, somebody's sort of improving on your times, you're definitely looking at lap times, and looking at overtaking and, stuff, and so on and so forth. Cadet 9, Cadet 12 tend to do that a lot because that when they get into juniors is where they put all those skills into practice and really start to get as fast as seniors, as you, you would well know. So um, you felt that your progression at this point was comfortable? You were going, you were doing what you wanted to do? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Did you feel he was doing what you wanted to do or do you think he hadn't clicked yet? Having, having been a winner, do you think he was still had a long way to go and could improve so much more? What did you think? It was obviously a massive stepping stone in the right direction and, you know, just happy for him to, to tick that one off. But the, you, you're always learning in, in this game. There's there's never a moment when I think you can say you've you've, you've got it all, you've made it. It's just it's forever a learning curve. Yeah, yeah, all right. Right, <clears throat> now, 2023, it got real interesting. Second, I think, in the National Sprint Championships. Are you involved at this point? Uh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, so this is where it really starts to get interesting. So you're now into Tasman Cart's team yep. and we've got a team environment. You're going to take a bit of a second. You, you, you just spin the spanners, man, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the expert's on board now. So, how was he listening? What was he? What was he? Oh, like? no, he was good. Like he's, he's definitely a good listener. Yeah, that's a big part of it. And obviously, we got involved with data, and and my part was just obviously watch him on track and and give him pointers and steer him in the right direction. You know, with cart set up and, and driving. So his first experience, and I'll ask him his thoughts on it. All I want your thoughts first. His first experience with data, was it an eye-opener and, oh, my God, he can improve so much more? Or was it, oh, yeah, tweak it, do a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit there? Was it was it a massive jump that he got out of him? Or was it just a slow, progressive improvement from using the skill set that you're now presenting him with? Yeah, it's probably just 
probably more just um, little parts because obviously I was ex- and sort of like a natural at the, at the sport. So it wasn't, we weren't making massive gains, it was just more um, finer points on tracks. Yeah. But it's, yeah. It's, it's quick to pick up points on, on different circuits. Yeah, yeah. And I guess you, being a data getting in there, and, and Jimmy does the same, but the data's only part of it. Mm. You've got to get that cart set up right to be able to utilise the data. So it's no good saying he's quick in the corner and he's got the right line and the power's coming on good coming off of it if it's not set up to do that. Mm. So again, you, your skills are going to be increased yourself. You, you, know, you can't just take a backseat role. You've got to learn an awful lot more in order to dial him in, as it were. So did you feel pressured to get him where oh, yeah, he needs to be? There's a bit of pressure to not you know, make our balls up on the, uh, on the cart set up. Um, again, working with everyone in the group, and, and it's hugely important for likes of Isaac to be giving us really clear, crisp feedback when he's been out there. We can see things. Obviously, there's a you know, video, video analysis, the data, but a lot of it comes from, from yeah. him and what he's feeling. Driver like input. As well. yeah. Yeah. And did you feel <clears throat> pressured yourself, or were you, were you enjoying the fact that it now feels like a team environment, it feels like they're listening to you, and it feels like each time you give feedback that the improvement's coming and you put the improvements on track? Was that how, how did that feel to you? Yeah, it felt good, especially knowing that... Um, you know, I do have the help and support to, um, yeah, be able to get better every, yeah, every yeah. time I go out and, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, good. Cool. And then it moved on to Cart Stars, the National Series, third in that. So clearly he's gotten, because that would have been against a few drivers, I guess, in the in the championships over there. Would have been a few. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, it's a big series in New Zealand, obviously, with five five rounds. <coughs> obviously, one in the South Island, four in the North Island. So obviously, we've got to cross the ditch to yeah. the North Island, so we're based in the South Island, South Island obviously. But, um, yeah, look, once again, Isaac's been to most of the tracks. So, yeah. and, and obviously with our, with our group, we've got more drivers, so yeah. click more data, more, there's just a lot more info for the drivers to learn yeah. from. What were the largest tracks over there? What's, what's I mean, I've heard a couple that are 550, 600 so metres. Were there some bigger tracks? Yeah, we've got Hamilton, obviously, and then we've got Rotorua, so they're big international tracks. So, uh, so over a kilometre, yeah, or around about a kilometre. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Similar to Ipswich. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, and yeah. obviously Hamilton's got a, a good drop there. Yeah. And um, the elevations are pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So, that, so, do you know what the elevation meterage is? 10, 15? Good draw. Something like that. Yeah, yeah right. we go yeah, down there. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a pretty. pretty everyone drops. loves that. Like Kalula and Lismo, we've got here where they've got a little bit. Kalula's got a lot. Everyone loves a track with elevation because they get. I, I, I guess you would enjoy that side yeah, of it. Yeah. Get into a track where it's a, just a bit different from a flat track and, you know, turn left, turn right, and go flat out down the straights. You've now got to drive it hard through corners and on sweeping bends going downhill or uphill where it's a bit more fun. Yeah, a bit like a fairground ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. I can imagine. All right, now um, moving on to the uh, the Jason Richards um, trip, which I think Buster came to over there. So you got an international driver coming over to see you guys now. So we're, we're swapping swapping paint, swapping drivers. Um, how did that go for you? Yeah, yeah, good. Um, yeah, I, th- I qualified uh, oh, second, I think. Yeah, and uh, two of the races I finished second and. Uh, I think it was the third race I, I finished first because um, uh, Levi McMillan, who I was racing with, he dipped a wheel yeah, on the right. yeah. last, uh, sorry, the last corner, and yeah. that was all it took. And you got him? Yeah, yep. cool. Yep. So it was that close. close. Yep. So there's yep. some real close racing in that. Is that, is that the, the, the New Zealand style? Is it much like we get over here where you get you know, plenty of drivers in a, in, a, in, a, in a race meeting and some of the classes can be really, really competitive and, and there's no quarter being given? So there's a bit of bumping and boring going on? You get a bit of that? Yeah, a little, a little bit, but yeah, typically you have your fast ones at the front. It's yeah. like any, like any class yeah. you go to, but yeah. that's that's pretty fair racing. And Nelson's quite a hard track to pass on. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, Isaac's done a lot of laps around Nelson because that's my home track, obviously. Yeah. So he's done yeah. a lot of miles, so he knows the inside and out. Because because I think New Zealand's much like the, the UK. There's a larger population, so you'd have a lot of car drivers there more than we'd have in Australia, because really, we've got to travel miles to go to nah, a state. Round. New Zealand's quite small. Yeah, we've only got about a thousand members over there. Oh, really? So it's quite small. We're spread out in the South Island. The North yeah. Island there's a lot. Yeah. So obviously we're we're um, we're, we're handicapped obviously in the South Island because obviously the the numbers we have. So yeah. that's why we go to the North Island. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. Now um, let's talk about uh, 2024 because I think you've uh, got a, a winner on the bell. So the um, the 20 the national schools champion. Yeah. I believe we can call you now. So you do have a, a trophy to say you are the champion. Yeah. yeah. Tell us all about that and and how that format was and what you did. Yeah, so uh, the format was it's called the CRK format. So you have three heats, pre-final and a final, and, and qualifying, obviously. So you start the heats where you qualified, and then uh, you add your points up from the heats, and that's where you start the pre-final. And then 
your points from the pre-final and the heats when you start the final, yeah. mm-hmm. and then yeah, whoever wins the final wins the whole meeting. So was that a big meeting? Was it? Yeah, yeah, it's a national yeah. meeting. So, yeah. yeah, all right. So there's plenty there. Data again? Yeah. So we had Jimmy over from Australia, obviously. So yeah. he was he was doing the data for us. So yeah. that was a massive massive yeah. game for obviously yeah. the guys on the team. So it definitely yeah. definitely helped um, Isaac to keep on track. And you never lost a ten mil spanner. <laughs> everyone loses a 10 mil spanner. I, I, I definitely would have at some point. Yeah, yeah. Kid, yeah, yeah. I want to hear where that 10 mil spanner went. Everybody <laughs> loses one. Yeah, Keep yeah. finding them on my track walks. Yeah, I've got a different one than what I have. Yeah. <laughs> um, pressure wise, now, now you've got a kid who's come through the ranks, he's been to Australia, he's now kind of got more experience and he's a bit of a racer. He's got a race head on. How do you keep him calm and get him to the start line knowing that he's got a proper chance of winning this? How do you. A, G him up and fire him up to win. B, keep him calm so he doesn't bin it. Well, I think it's more about him keeping me calm for a sec. Yeah. <laughs> Are you one of them frantic dads? <laughs> okay, we can maybe follow yeah, to that track frantic a little bit from time to time. But, uh, just, just all your preparation, um, getting it right. I'm, Brendan will tell you that uh, yeah, I'm probably the last one to leave the track most nights and uh, just making sure everything's tickety-boo. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, that, that you know, pre, pre the meeting, we, we had that Jason Richards event one week prior to the yeah. to the national round. Yeah. So and Jimmy was at that as well, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah so you've so had a taster of Jimmy's input data, and yeah. he's pretty hectic. I think he can flip from screen to screen and go, "Oh my god, it's it's a bit it's a bit mad." So yeah, carry on. Yes, yeah, so that was all part of the plan, you know, to to get back in the seat. We've obviously been in the car for a little bit, so um, getting back in the seat, yeah. tuning ourselves back into the go kart, using yeah. that weekend as a real precursor to. To doing well the following yeah, weekend. Yeah, so cool. All right. So now that he's gotten Jimmy under his belt and he's got data coming into him, and you've you've gotten what is basically your base setup, I presume. You had a base setup for the track, ready to go. Yep. He gets the first session in, qualifying or whatever it is, the data comes out, transferring that data information to an improvement at this age in this championship. Was that something you relished and were easy? to do or was it difficult and you had to really think about it was it a flood of too much information considering the pressure it might have been on you how was it um it was a bit of everything to be honest like um like obviously i knew uh, there was things to work on and yeah it was just finding all the um uh, what's the word like improvements yeah improvements yeah. and just yes yeah, it's, it's all like little little things that yeah make the big differences yeah. Because I guess qualifying is, is, is one of those things where you try and get a clear track and get a fast lap in. But being able to transfer data information and, and information on improving the carts, handling, speed out of corners, is all well and good. But when you've got 20 carts all around you, it's not so easy. No, no, it's, it's all not. about race lines now and, and, and getting you know past somebody who's in front of you and utilising their mistakes to your benefit or vice versa and defending from somebody behind you. So it was, was that easy for you? Was it something you took to quite well? And, and were able to progress further again? Yeah, I think I I handled it quite well because um, we I was in the lead for most of the races and yeah, I had people on my tail the whole time. So, yeah, I think I was able to handle that quite well, definitely yeah. better than I have done in the past. Yeah. And, yeah. I'm keen to know then, because you're out front and most of the races and most of the laps are out front, were you still tweaking that car every single time you came back in before the next race? Were there things being changed? Um, not too much because we knew the car was good. It was so in the window. Yeah, it was in yeah. the window, so we didn't want to change or make a big change to ruin it all. So yeah, yeah. But Jimmy, Brandon, they, they were able to show you things that you could improve each time you went out, and yeah. you then put those improvements into practice. Yeah, it was, Jimmy was on the data like after every session yeah. I came in and yeah. yeah, showed me what I could do better and. Yeah. yeah, I was able to um, put that out on the track cool. and, yeah, go right. faster. Well, you're a winner in carts, but now you want to be a winner in cars, and there's been a transition. You've transitioned now, age 14, and you've gone into Formula Ford, correct? Yep. So, first of all, your first thoughts when you jumped out of a car and into a Formula Ford, what went through your head? Oh, I don't know how to describe it, really. It was, yeah, amazing. It was, yeah, the speed and... Yeah, just it was everything was just yeah incredible. Yeah, it's a bit different open wheelers at such speeds on big circuits now. Yeah. yeah. So what circuits did you go to first? What was your first racetrack where you drove the Formula Ford? Uh, so yeah, so my first track the race at was at Royal Pona. That's in Christchurch. What you call it again? Royal Pona. Royal. Royal, Royal Pona. That's a Kiwi word. <laughs> <laughs> Roro something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I'm only teasing. So yeah. so um, how big was that track? 
Um, I think it's about three and a half k's or something. So right. it's about a in yeah. a Formula Ford, it's about a one minute thirty yeah, lap right. time. A little bit like uh, Morgan Park, I think that kind of size. Yeah, yeah. Q, not QR, QRs. I think it might be even smaller. So feelings were good, everything's good, and you thought this is me, this is me yeah. now. Yeah. Yep. You really want to go for that. Yeah. All right. How did you transition from a car to a car? What did you, you just say, get in it and yeah, send it? Yeah, yeah. Because he's now got to, he's got to learn gears, I guess, in that one. Well, exactly. Heel toe or not heel toe? Uh, we're not, not heel toe in. Um, yeah. Left foot braking. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he did it on his, on his first outing. But, um, yeah, fortunately, a good friend of mine, you know, owned the car and helped us um, at the time and helped us get into it. But, yeah, I, I remember it vividly. Um, literally pushing him, you know, because he's never driven gears or a clutch before. So yeah. it was like, yeah, you just lift that pedal out and give him a shunt and out oh, you yeah. go, mate, out you go. So <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring us home in one piece. We're, yeah. in, we're, we're in the deep end again because you can't simulate that. You know, you either get it first time or you don't. And you're bouncing down kangaroo open like a, like a kid learning in mum's car at 12 years of age. Mm-hmm. So for you, nerves... Obviously, yeah, definitely. But excitement yeah. when he got going, and you hear that, rrr, rrr, rrr. oh, that he's into it, he's got it. Yeah. So was there a yeah, bit yeah, of a shifting. beam? Was there a beam on your face? You think that's my that's my boy. Yeah, no, there definitely was. There definitely yeah. was. And this was like a, ha- a have a go day. So with the next challenge we had was sort of getting his license and getting into it. But yeah. uh, it didn't take long for him to say this is what I want to do. So yeah, yeah. yeah it was pretty chuffing. Right. Pretty chuffed. Yeah. Let's talk about how you did in that because I think you probably, you know, not nice to see a kid come from your karting arena. And go to cars and see oh, him, but it's good see him successful because yeah. that's that's where you'd like someone. Not everybody wants to. The, you'd like to get people keep keep people in cars because club day racers. You know they, they keep us in a job. Yeah, let, let's, let's let's not yeah. be stupid. Look, we, we like club day racers. Mm. That keeps a bit of a business going. Yeah. Karting is a business, oh, yeah. but to see somebody progress, it's a bit of a. That's one of my boys. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good to get Isaac back into the carts because obviously the, the kids in the group look up to Isaac. So yeah. and of course now they're following him in his formula forward. So it's, yeah. so it's great, and that's why it's good that this weekend to bring him over to Isaac here. And, yeah. And obviously we need, we've got a couple of goals we're going to get over here, so yeah. hopefully this weekend we might be able to achieve those. Yeah. But cool. no, it's going good. Yeah. Um, fourth or overall, first of all, in the South Island Formula Ford Championship. I think four podiums, five rounds, top rookie. Tell me about it. That must be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it was very cool. I wasn't expecting to as well as I did, so that was a good confidence booster, especially coming into the National Series. Yeah. That was, um, yeah, after that. And... Yeah, yeah. More nerve wracking with cars at high speeds oh. next year within it because if those wheels touch, yeah. that, that's a big off. Yeah, yeah, it's a fast off too. So was it kind of you know I'm just going to keep well out of the way with this, or were you think oh I'm going to I'm going to turn in I'm going to get him? What was it? What was going through your head? Well, at first it was definitely very nerve wracking, especially you know you said high speeds and you can't touch. So yeah, yeah, but no good. Just going up on the track more and more, I got used to it, and with. Uh, Dean and Zach are helping me. They just said, "You need to um, roughen up and you know get in there." So yeah, right. Yeah, that definitely helped me get used to it as right. well. So at what point did um, excitement turn to nerves? Because now, <laughs> now he's sending it. So if he's fully sending it, you think, "Hang on, that's either it cost me money or it's going to hurt him." Well, you must have been. You you would have been spinning around in your head. Your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Probably the time that he did get turned around and side by side of the fence for the yeah. first time. But yeah. uh, fortunately, there's only been one the one decent one. But yeah, yeah he's like, oh, where's he gone? And then oh god, what the car? What's the car going to look like? Yeah, and, yeah. Because again, that would be the the nerve thing. It's like first of all, is he okay? You, know, you get yep, he's fine. The driver's okay. He's out. Damn it! How much damage you down to the car? What's that going to cost yeah. me? So, there's there's a, a emotional stage where it's stage one, stage two. One you've got to do. Stage two you don't want to do. But exactly. yeah, it has to be done, I guess. So yeah, and it always looks a lot worse than it does in those, yeah. those cars. So yeah. again, support behind us got it all fixed, and you know, wasn't wasn't too bad. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 been been exciting, um, and yeah, wouldn't wouldn't, well, ch- wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, cool. Are you with him at this point? You, did you go with him oh, to the cars? I've, I've been to a couple two rounds because obviously running the, the car team, it's hard to get to his rounds. But yeah, so you're in the VIP tent with him. Yeah, yeah. VIP, VIP guest. Press me, me oranges and me egg and let sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I do enjoy it's though. Not, it's yeah, good, it's it good be. to follow. Yeah. Great to watch. Yeah. yeah. Um, you moved on then. Six overall in the New Zealand Formula Four Championship. That's a another step up, isn't it? So yeah. a national championship again. Really good championship. Tell me how that went and how it started. Where you were. What kind of tracks you went to? Yeah, no, they went yeah very well. Um, yes, yeah, so we had two rounds in the South Island, two rounds in the North Island, which is yeah that makes the national series and. Yeah, I started off really well at the first round. I think I was fourth on points after that round. And, yeah, it was when I came to the North Island, it got quite a bit trickier because I hadn't been to those tracks before. Yeah. And 
and yeah, yeah, and I haven't raced the North Island guys either, so they're yeah. quite a bit different to race against compared yeah. to the South Island guys. They're a bit more yeah aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that series culminate in you being the undercard to the Supercars? Is that right? You were yeah, yeah, one of their rounds. Yeah, and you got to go in the Supercar. Yes, I like did. That? Yeah, yeah. Did I you mean, tell him to go a bit quicker. Was he just going a bit too slow for you? What oh you no, say? he was. It was he was sending it. Who was driving it? I was James Golding. Oh, he's not that quick, is he? <laughs> Sorry, Ken. I'm only joking. <laughs> no, that would have been good though, because that would have showed you what you really want to do. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. you know, that's everyone loves jumping in a supercar, yeah. especially when they're allowed to send it. Yeah. When you go to Norwell, they don't. They're not allowed yet. They don't. Well, they do a bit, but noise restrictions mean they can't. But there, he would have been on the gas, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Giving he was, it, yeah. Giving well, it everything. Yeah. Did you tell him you were a racer? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he would have yeah. given it even yeah. more. They they don't hold back when they know you're a racer. They don't hold back. So it would have been fully. You're having this. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Look, um, no, I think you were um, awarded again rookie of the, the year, and it was at that round where you got the rookie of the year. Yep, yep, that's correct. So two years running rookie of the year. Yep, that's pretty cool. So for people are watching this because yeah. um, you've obviously got a bit of pace and a bit of uh, knowledge and a bit of experience already. Tell me, we're gonna, for the last four minutes, we're going to tell me all about your dreams and what you want to be. So you've driven from karts to Formula Ford, and I think it's the route which. Chas Mostert went. We know there's a couple more that might have gone that route. Are you steering yourself to make yourself available and hopefully get in the eyes of teams to go that particular route where, where it can branch off in many directions? Where would you, first of all, like to go? Um, well, I think Formula One would be the number one goal because, I mean, it's been my dream ever since I started karting. But, you yeah, know, to be a racing driver in general, I'd love, like, whether it's IndyCar or supercars or... Whatever, I'd, I'd yeah. be happy with anything. To be anyway, honest. Anyways, car. Yeah, yeah. You're like a magpie. You give, give me a car, I'll yeah. race it for you. Well, and again, it can happen. I mean, there are people out there that are doing it with very little budgets. Once you get sponsors on board, because as you you get sponsors on board, and that's where the money comes from, that gets you seat time. If you show somebody that seat time is fast seat time, suddenly there's a door open somewhere else and think, let's try this kid. And you don't know where it's going to go until it happens, because it can happen. So I guess if you keep on keeping your, your head level and doing the right thing in whatever motor vehicle you may be in, I guess that's the right way for a future. Would you agree with that? Oh, no, totally. The way you see your drivers go from carts to cars, yeah. and that's that's obviously Isaac's very tuned in. I think Dave Sarah had an awful lot of good words to say about him in the city of, uh, in Melbourne, I think, Correct. with AKC, yeah. sorry. Yeah. AKC, he was with him. So he, yeah. he really did like the way that he listened, the way that he focused. And oh, no, totally. I mean, I mean, we've got a lot of context, and I've made a lot of contacts in Australia with people and, and Dave's been a part of Isaac for probably probably six years. So he's been a, he's been part of the part of the team. So yeah, if we can get some more spots out there want to get involved with the kids, yeah, yeah sing out. Yeah. And it's all about getting getting noticed. Oh it is. You, you would yeah. know the same, you know, your your pockets are only so deep and you yes, when the kids got experience and the kids got uh, ability, it's not to showcase it, but you really do want to you know, take help him get that next stage and get sponsors on board. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we're we're living his dream as well, and and you know, we're very very fortunate to have people like Brendan and Tasman Carts and, and DPE and, and and Dave Sierra over the years. Uh, fantastic people to you know help us, you know, get on that journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. This year probably is really about focusing on some of that sponsorship. Last yeah. year was learning the car, yeah. and this year we more towards yeah. you know taking it to the next yeah. level and, and getting some yeah. others on board. It, it's one of the reasons why I started this podcast. I was offered the studio by Scott and Colleen. Oh, months and months ago, and I said, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm busy, I'm too busy. <clears throat> then I thought about it, and there are so many kids that I've commentated on in the last eight years that have gone from carts to cars. I thought, that would be a really interesting story. There's many, many different interesting stories, and it's sprint cars, it's it's Toyota 86s, it's XLs, you name it. They go, they're like going in every direction at 14 and 15 years of age. And I always thought, you know, you've got to get 20, surely, before you go, you've got to be senior before you go to a car, but no. They're going very early. Reason? I think data is a very key point of kids being able to transfer the skills you've got in a car straight into a car. And bang, you're, they're on it straight away. Get them in young, yeah. If you look at some of the guys that have got into Formula One, I think Max was 17 when he, when he first went there. I mean, you've, you've got two or three years to get there. Yeah. You start to go, okay, well, I need to be in one at 13, 14 years yeah. of age. Yeah. Um, beyond that, you're, cool. you're getting old yeah. <laughs> in racing too. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, don't forget. I was your first podcast. When you make it to Formula One, can you please give me a ring and say, Kev, would you like to come to a race? Because I want to see you in a car. All right? Yeah, promise. Yeah, yep. Pinky promise. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, listen, it was really good having you aboard. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming Thanks to the podcast. Much. Great yeah, that you've all the way from New Zealand. We flew them over, especially for the show, eh? over the Dutch. Is that right? 
I think over the ditch. <laughs> Not sure what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it sucks times. No, listen, it was honestly really good. And good luck in the road tax nationals. We wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you very There's much. some proper competition, so keep yourself, keep your nose clean and um, get on that podium. But great to have you on board, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Well, well done, guys.